Welcome to the Hexblast build. Hexblast totem build. The basic version of the build has 7.1 million DPS, uh, cap resistance says 76% physical damage reduction. It has no real mana to speak of, but it has energy shield to cover it, 4,000 life. The mana is technically in the negative because the damage is technically slightly lower because you don't have unbound damage. Okay, so it's 6.8 for the basic version. So with the basic version, you have uh, a Tripanon just to work with the Sandstorm Visage, which gives you critical strike chance for your spells equal to your main hand weapon. So I have a 100% chance to crit with it. We have the Covenant, which gives you the added chaos damage, which just is a big, big punchy thing. We have the Phenomus's Weave, which gives you Aspect of the Spider, which slows and weakens things around you so that they take more damage. Plus, Phenomus's Weave itself means that you take, or you deal more damage to things with spiders, spider webs on them, which build up over time. We have Basic Boots here for resistances. We have Marlene's Fallacy, no anointment. We have Profane Proxy, just to... Uh, transfer our cur curses. We have our despair in there. We have a basic resist ring. Uh, we had to double up on fire just because we were running out of resistances, <laughs> basically. Uh, we have a magnate here. Uh, it has att attribute qual quality on it. You can just ignore that. It doesn't matter. We have our basic life and mana flasks. Then we have a Granite Flask with increased armor and a Sulfur Flask with increased cast speed. Looking on the Granite Flask, we go from 76 to 88% physical damage reduction. Looking on the Sulfur Flask, we go from 7.1 million to uh, 8.1 million DPS. We also have a Tincture running, which is an Ironwood Tincture. Uh, I don't know for sure if the damaging hits always stun en enemies that are on full life works for Hex Blast. But I've selected this just as its thing to start with. We'll see how that goes. None of the implicits are really good for it, honestly, because it has most of what the implicits already give inherently. It has penetrates chaos resistance and crit multi against enemies on full life, just because there isn't really any suffixes that are amazing for it. We have forbidden flesh and flame here, which have sanctuary on them to give you consecrated ground and also so monsters take more damage from it. We have apex mode just for more damage. We have our clusters, which I'll go into in a moment, and careful planning, which gives us more decks. So going over to skills, this is how you build the build itself. You start with this this section here, to the starter area, complete the entire starter area, then rush over here, pick up Devotion, rush up to Ancestral Bond, pick up Ancestral Bond, grab Primal Manifestation as well as its Mastery, grab Purity of Flesh, and then by that time, you're going to start to have auras, so grab Sovereignty. You can skip Arcane Capacitor till later, till you have your first Ascendancy. We have Arcane Potency here. We have, Then we have Heart of Darkness, which you'll take after that. You will, at some point, and this is probably going to be before you take most of everything here, is you're going to rush over here to Eldritch Battery, because once you have all your auras up, you're going to need Eldritch Battery to actually give you some energy shields, but that most likely won't be till in your, your in your 60s. Grab all this stuff whenever you can. The dual socket lasts for only when you need the dexterity. At this point, you're going to want to start to grab the tireless wheel, the sanctum of thought wheel, and the faith and steel wheel. You'll be about end game at this point, so you can either go towards your clusters if you have enough money or you can go towards your Constitution Wheel and your Iron Will, both of which are good. We have our Apex Mode here, where we also have a Reservation Jewel in our Advanced version. And then we have our Clusters here. So for our Clusters, we have a large Chaos Cluster, which cost about 60 C. We have Wicked Paul, just for damage. We have Touch of Cruelty, where it hinders things on hit, chance to hinder things on hit, plus hindered things take more damage. And we have Unholy Grace for just flat damage. Then we have our Totem Utility Cluster, which has Snaring Spirits, so totems hinder enemies near them when summoned to synergize with Touch of Cruelty. 
And we have Sleepless Sentries, which give you Onslaught when you summon a Totem, which gives you lots of movement speed as well as lots of damage. You can avoid taking the two jewel, the two jewel sockets till you actually have your Forbidden Flesh and Flames. After that, you have your Chaos Dot Cluster. The main function of this is to get Infernal Suffering, which is inflict Wither for two seconds on hit if there's five or less Wither debuffs, so it can bring up to six Wither debuffs there. Uh, since each totem hits 1.3 times a second, and there's five totems, that'll be six and a half hits per second. So you're going to be able to inflict, you're able to inflict about three Wither debuffs a second on a particular enemy if everything's focusing it. Uh, so it scales up pretty fast. You'll be able to maintain all the Wither debuffs on this. And then if you use Wither yourself, that will just go up. So that, help, that helps start your Withered, and then your, your actual self-casting of Wither will help you maintain at much higher levels. Then we have Septic Spells just for damage. Then we have our Ascendancies here. So we have, a, uh, we have our Hierophant. The first and foremost, you're going to want to get Arcane Blessing. Uh, your totems aren't going to be powerful enough that you're going to want the plus one to maximum summon totems for your very first Sensi. This will give them the punch they need, plus like mana regeneration and stuff. Second to Sensi, pick up Pursuit of Faith for the plus one. Your totems are now going to be doing a lot more damage, so you want to scale them up with having more totems. Third is going to be Conviction of Power, because Endurance Charges really help you when it comes to just scaling your protection. Uh, these Endurance Charges here give you 16% physical damage reduction on their own. Plus, that also works against damage over time, since they're, they're flat physical damage reduction rather than armor giving physical damage reduction. And before you have the Tripan, and these will also help with uh, just dealing damage. Then finally, we have Ritual of Awakening, which is damage, mana regeneration, which will help regenerate your energy shield, and just percent mana, or percent life regeneration because that's good then we go over to our ward in ascendancy where you have bark skin just because it uh, builds up armor over time on you if you get hit you gain evasion chance but your armor goes down without bark skin because we're at 76 percent physical damage reduction with bark skin if we turn it off we drop down to 64 so it's about 12% of your physical damage reduction is from bark skin. This assumes eight bark skin stacks. You go up to 10, but this is basically assuming that you've been hit once or twice since uh, like just on average. Just because I don't want to over assume the amount of damage reduction you're going to have because that can be dangerous. Then we have lesson of the seasons. So 10% chance to avoid non-damaging ailments on you per bark below maximum. So uh, on average, you're all, you're probably going to have like seven or eight barks, so you're only going to have like a ten or like a twenty to thirty percent chance to avoid non-damaging ailments. But because your bark is generally very high, unless you have like a very tank like run in and smash kind of playstyle, uh, you will not be getting bled, ignited, or poisoned very much. And if you do, it will not last long. If you like to just rush into things, you don't care how many times you get hit, then you will have a better chance of avoiding non-damaging ailments instead, which is just as good. Then we have our coated blade, just so we have tinctures, like the uh, tincture we have here, the ironwood tincture. And finally, we have the Oath of the Magi. So what we are using from this is we have no gems in our equipped gloves, so we have 25% increased maximum life, which is nearly 400 life and 50 life regen. And we have no socketed gems in our boots, so we have 30% increased movement speed. Our movement speed is 77% with this build, because we have 30% from Oath of the Magi, we have 30% from our boots, and we have 20% from our uh, onslaught that we get from Sleepless Sentries, our totem notable right here. Technically, that adds up to 80. This is 77, because we have armor boots. So... Armor generally will, armor bases will generally reduce your movement speed in exchange for being giving you lots of physical damage reduction. So that's why it has reduced movement speed. Now, 
we are going to swap over to the advanced set of items and the advanced tree. So this is going to be a much more expensive version. Uh, currently, this the basic version right here is I'm gonna say about 1450 chaos. You don't need the chest plate, which is three div of it. So you can get by with about four div ish, about 800 chaos. But but generally, to get this damage, you're going to want to have the Covenant. This is not a League Start build. This is not a cheap build. This is just meant to be a good build. The basic gear is meant to just make this like functional for this level of DPS and this level of defense. So moving to the advanced gear and the advanced tree, we jump up from 7.1 million DPS to 10.7 million DPS with the swap over. As for the differences in the tree here, there are not many. All that we have done here is we've added the Shaman's Dominion wheel and the Arcanist, Dom Arcanist Dominion uh, notable. We've added the Charge Mastery back for damage and we've added the Caster Mastery back for damage. That's it. And this is level 99 is what it's set for. If you chop off the this, you get up to 97. This is only 600,000. It's not that big a deal. You can save two points if you want by uh, by getting corrupted Sandstorm Visage with power plus one to power charges. That is an option. Uh, Sandstorm Visage being that it is a div to start with is going to be very hard to get that. So I don't even have that included because I haven't even checked how much that's worth because I assume it's ridiculous. So we have a corrupted plus two to level of socket AOE gems. This this particular thing a six linked covenant with the plus two to socket to aoe gems you're looking at about eight div or 1600 chaos just for the chest plate uh, it is not cheap but if you get it it gives you an extra million and a half damage i will be going for this and getting it within the next couple weeks uh Phenomous weave uh, we got the corruption with cast bead on it it's just a nice little uh, bump to your damage if you want and can get it, you also, in addition to getting the cast feed, you can also go for a... The benefits of having a random curse on this means that uh, if your skitter bots don't get to something, your hex blast will still be doing area damage based on things already being cursed on hit, or if your skitter bots run away to go to a different pack. So that can be really useful. And being that Phenomus' Weave is only about 5 or 10 C to begin with, that's more reasonable to get. Then we have Suing Exarch and Eater of World Boots, just increase life regeneration rate, just to up our life regen, and damage per endurance charge. Then we have Marlene's Fallacy with Disciple of Slaughter. Technically, Surveillance is more damage, but if you uh, manage to kill something and get another in a Frenzy charge, then your damage suddenly goes up because I have it set just the one minimum. It's a 700,000 damage increase. Moving on, just normal profane proxy. Uh, we swapped up to a different resistance ring. This one has prismatic catalyst on it. You don't need all 20%, but this does give you more chaos, da chaos damage protection, which is good. This is just to make your life a bit easier. Now have the attribute quality on Magnate. We had technically we had it before showing, but I mean now is when you'd actually do it, just for a little bit of extra strength and health. And those are the main differences between them. Oh, I did add a harvest enchantment to Tripanon. Now we'll just go look at our skills here. Our Tripanon is a six socket, but not a six link, which reduces the price of it a lot, thankfully. We only need a four link here, which gives us flame dash and faster casting portal and wither. You don't need to have your portal in your main hand. You can always put that in your offhand, or not in your offhand, in your uh, alternate weapon swap. But I don't, I don't like putting portal in the weapon swap, so I just have it here. Faster casting is specifically attached to wither as well because the faster that you can pulse out this wither, a the more that you can do while just like running around, where like you stop for a second, cast for like maybe one, maybe two seconds, and then run away, it gets out more stacks faster so you can maintain it a lot easier. And if you can maintain the maximum wither stacks, because all of this damage is based on six, which is the amount that you can get by naturally your totems attacking. If you can get it up to 15, 
you jump from 9.5 to 5 million to 12 million. The difference is staggering if you can manage it. So we have the other two sockets in the Tripanon. They're just for Molten Shell, and which we have on our left click, and Determination. Nothing, nothing too exciting. Since we're only doing three blues and a white here, technically you can do three blue, three red on the Tripanon, which is really easy to get, which is why I've set it up this way. Uh, then the helmet, which is a pure blue helmet, only needs to go blue. So you have Summon Skitter bots with its Unbound Ambulance I was showing you earlier. And we also have the Righteous Fire and Vol Blight. So this is only for if you want to activate Vol Righteous Fire, if you feel like you're safe enough to do so, or you're comfortable with the risk, you can activate that. And it increases it 1.8 million DPS increase if you can use the right Vol Righteous Fire. You can also activate Vol Blight fairly often, which is another 900,000 damage increase. So if you can just Vol Blight something, it'll take a bunch of extra damage. Generally, this is a two-button build. You have your Wither on right-click, and you have your Hex Blast on, or Hex Blast Totems on your, either your 1 or your Q, however you have it set up, your very first slot. So for Hex Blast Totems, we have multiple totem support and spell totem support because those are basically required. We have increased critical strike damage because we have maximum critical strike chance. So cruelty here, which is more damage with hits. Then we have a variable gem here, which is hypothermia and void manipulation. The better one of these two options is void manipulation, not hypothermia. Uh, hypothermia gives a chance to freeze, but that doesn't matter for this build, because this build freezes always. Hex Blast has this cool ability where all damage can ignite, freeze, and shock. You, because you always crit, have a 100% chance to freeze and shock. The main reason why I have hypothermia here instead of void manipulation is purely just because I often play with someone who does a flame link support, and with void manipulation you ca can deal no elemental damage. If you know that you're just going to be playing on your own and you don't need any elemental damage from anything, you can use Void Manipulation, that's fine. But otherwise, I use Hypothermia for group play. And in the end, we have our gloves and our boots. Both are empty because of the Warden buff that we get from having nothing socket into either of them. That's the build. Honestly, I'm really excited to keep playing it. And I intend to get this build well over 10 million. And it bursts over 10 million easily but none of them are reliable, so I don't include them. So if you want to try this build out, I would heavily encourage it if you have the money already. Uh, it's not a League Start build, unless you're confident you can make a lot of money very quickly. You can theoretically League Start, start it, but it will suck. Uh, that's why I League started the Holy to Flame Totem build, because the Holy Flame Totem build was a lot more reasonable for its price. The link in the description to that. So that's generally what I would suggest. So now we are going to head back to some gameplay in a second on Twitch for the YouTube people. Thanks for watching.